Mike has requested me on Patreon to review Hannah Montana, the movie. Before talking about the movie, I should probably mention that one of the earliest videos ever made was on the Hannah Montana television series, in which I tore the show apart. That video is not online anymore, and not long after I made it, I was not proud of it. I mainly thought I was too harsh on the series and on Miley Cyrus, and it was not a good video at all. So since I was going to review the movie, I thought it was necessary to revisit a couple of episodes of the series. Do I think Hannah Montana is a good show? Not particularly, as I don't find the jokes to be all that funny, and it features the standard children's sitcom humor. The acting is also turned up to 11. The show is just not catered to my taste, but I understand why tweens and other children love the show and tuned in every week to see the comedic hijinks of Miley Stewart and her musical alter ego. I think there's also a worthy message here about respecting that celebrities have private lives that exist outside of entertaining us. As outlandish as the premise is, it makes sense why Miley wants her pop star persona to not get in the way of leading a peaceful life with her friends. So with me not enjoying the show, you might think I'd feel similarly negative towards the movie. And yet, I actually did not mind Hannah Montana the movie. I still had some major problems with it, but the filmmakers also did a few things I appreciated. For starters, the storyline of Miley becoming too invested in the Hannah persona and forgetting about her Tennessee roots is a solid one, and I thought the best moments in the movie mainly involved her on the farm. There are a lot of quiet scenes that are pivotal to Miley's development, and that's partly a credit to the director, Peter Chelson. They hired an actual filmmaker to direct this movie, who allows time for those moments, and I think that helped the performances too. They felt a bit more natural here, even with the occasional Disney Channel-style acting that peeks through. I also found myself laughing out loud on a few occasions, thanks to a few funny one-liners and even a bit of the slapstick resulted in chuckles. The writer credited on the screenplay is Dan Berenson, who never wrote for the show, but has worked on several Disney Channel original movies. Most notably, Wizards of Waverly Place the movie, which I have a soft spot for. He also was on the writing staff of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which is a series I'm very fond of. So I wanted to give him a shout-out. I also want to compliment the soundtrack, which I thought was quite nice. Even though it mostly consists of the sort of teeny bop pop songs we expect to be in a movie like this, I found them listenable enough. There's a particularly pivotal scene where Miley performs a song titled The Climb, which the plot has been building up to the entire time. It's a nice song, and Cyrus puts it all on to sing it, with Chelsea oh so smartly not turning into a big spectacle. It's just this teenage girl singing her heart out to the supportive crowd of local townspeople. By the way, Taylor Swift shows up in this movie. She's only in one scene where she performs a song titled Crazier, and I thought this was the best song in the movie. Watching her scene, I assumed she was just playing a random townsperson, but then the end credits reveal she's actually playing herself, which begs the question why they did not ask her to perform this benefit concert. She was already popular at the time. Anyway, despite me appreciating these elements, I did have a lot of issues with the plot. I just mentioned the Benefit concert, and this is because of a subplot where the town wants to stop an evil developer from building a shopping mall. That's right, this has the we have to raise money to stop the evil developer storyline. However, said developer is in only two scenes, one of which involves him making some snide remarks, just to let the audience know he's evil. It's just a very stock antagonist. Meanwhile, there's yet another subplot where paparazzi keeps sneaking around and trying to find out more about Hannah Montana. He's mostly used as an additional conflict in some slapstick scenes, but I tend to forget about him whenever he was off screen. Speaking of slapstick, I got the impression the director writer really hated Miley's brother Jackson, because in almost every scene he gets physically harmed in some way. There's even a part where they just randomly cut to Jackson at a zoo and he gets attacked by a crocodile. I just felt bad for his character the entire time. There's also a scene where Miley and Hannah have to be at two different places at once and shenanigans ensue. I found that entire section frustrating, because Miley could have easily resolved this beforehand by just asking Travis, the boy she likes, if they could move their day to another time as she has to accompany Hannah to this event. It's the most contrived scene in a film that is admittedly full of contrivances. Speaking of Travis, I did not think he and Miley had much chemistry with each other. There's also an aspect of the ending that I found especially corny. These elements drag the film down somewhat for me. However, while I would not give Hannah Montana the movie a passing grade, I did find it watchable enough, and it did make me feel something at least. It is primarily made for fans of the show, and they are likely to love it, but I thought the filmmakers did try to make it appeal to outsiders the best they could. Anyway, if you've seen Hannah Montana the movie, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for the request, Micah.